hello viewers today we're going to be cleaning and servicing some heaters that I got recently we're going to start with this Holmes heater despite the presence of summer it is still in my opinion intolerably cold here in the shop today it is 62 degrees in here so the heaters are very much still needed and this one being relatively quiet I thought this was a good one to have that we could use uh, during videos because some of the other heaters that I have are relatively loud and it creates a lot of background noise. So, this one uh, is very quiet and it seems to work pretty well. So, let's see if we can get this cleaned up. It is absolutely disgusting. So, it's going to require quite a bit of service. Looks like there is a total of six screws, two on the bottom, two uh, on the sides, and two up at the top. Looks like the two on the bottom are slightly longer size. Okay, so there's that nastiness. We'll get that washed out. Uh, let's see if this just kind of pulls off of here. I would hope that it does. Okay, there's that. This is pretty dirty too. And let's see, what do we have here? It looks like... Looks like this should just be coming off. There it goes. And what else do we have here? We have four screws holding this uh, triangular thing on, which I believe is what's mounting the element. mounting the motor too. Oh, good grief. You won't believe how much dust is sitting in the back of this thing. There's a tie wrap I gotta cut off here to pull the wires away. tie-wrap wires in place. It's so annoying. Especially this one because it's, it's so awkward to get to. I did it twice. Alright. This is comical. Take a look at this motor. I don't even see a daggone motor anymore. Oh my goodness. Well, I think I'm going to start with vacuuming this out before it starts making a mess of my table.
Okay, so now that that's uh, bulk of it's been removed, this has one of those annoying designs where the cord will not pass through the housing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, remove the strain relief here. Oh, it's going to push you the wrong way. All right, no problem, no problem. I know how to do this. I'm going to uh, force the strain relief through. And then once I've got it through, I'm going to remove it from the cord and then pull the cord back through the other way. Now, it's not going to come off all the way because the plug, although I, I kind of wonder if this plug ought to be replaced. It's kind of crummy. I'll see if I have another plug on hand. If I do, I think I'm going to replace that. Um, if not, uh, it's a big issue. So I'm going to force the strain relief through here. That's, of course, much easier said than done. that's off. I'm going to remove it from the cord and now I can pull the cord much more of the way through. Through enough that I can put this disgusting thing in the bathtub and keep the electronics a safe distance away from the water. So that's what I'm going to do now and then I'll pick up on the video again once I've done some cleaning. I've got all the parts cleaned. It's not flawless by any means, but it's good enough that it's no longer disgusting and it's just going to be used here in the shop. So if it's a little bit dirty, I don't really care. I could go through here with a baking soda paste and really get off every last mark that's on the housing, but I just don't think it's worth the time. I'd rather spend the time fixing something vintage so this will work um, it's clean enough to use now the motor it really it runs just fine and with all the rust that's on the shaft there's no way I'm getting this off easily so I think what I'm going to do is just put some oil in it and be done with it we're going to use uh, oil for fans I know there's been some confusion in, in regards to what kind of oil is supposed to go in fan bearings, but this is the kind. As you can see, full screen, it's specifically for fans. And it's a little bit hard to open. Anyways, um, just put some oil in the front of the shaft or in the front bearing or other. I'd say that's pretty good. Oops. It's spinning pretty freely. This is a relatively low RPM motor, so the bearings are probably not nearly as worn out as what we usually see in, you know, a desk fan or whatever. Now we're going to begin to reassemble. First thing I'm going to do is put the strain relief back onto the cord. 
cord is still pretty dirty, but again, I, it's not worth the time to try to clean it up. Now these are a little bit difficult to get back into place a lot of times. I typically just kind of finagle it in here with a screwdriver. That's in. Now it's actually been a few days since I took this apart. And I don't recall exactly, but I remember there being something kind of weird about the way this connected. I believe this... I thought this went kind of like this. Oh, you know what the problem is? I think the motor goes in first. Yeah, that makes more sense. Now, the controls here, you recall in the previous video, there was a problem with the controls not working correctly. And that is because the inside of this is stripped out. So I think what I'm going to do is, is put this broken knob, I don't know what in the world that is. I guess that's just a plastic maybe? I don't know. Anyways, um, these knobs are interchangeable, and since I never really use 
thermostat on these kind of heaters I'll probably just put this good knob that was on the thermostat onto the speed selector because that I do use um, and I want that to be working so and actually I may have to get the glue out because I believe this light was held in place primarily by a glue. Well actually maybe not. Maybe not. All right, maybe they're not interchangeable. I thought they were, perhaps I'm mistaken. Okay, so now it's working. Don't quite understand that, but that's a good so I'm not going to question it. It magically works now for no explainable reason. Good. I like those kind of fixes. Very easy. Now the cords were all sorts of tie wrapped inside of here originally and uh, I'm just not seeing that to be necessary. Can't tell where the flat part of the shaft is, or the blade is rather. Yeah, the wires are nowhere near the blades. I think that's totally unnecessary. I'm going to leave that alone. Alright, the spin down time is satisfactory for my likings on something like this. And I believe I put this in wrong. Perhaps this is supposed to go the other way. Oh, now it's jammed. Oh, good. Yeah, it's definitely supposed to go this way. Okay, that's better. Alright, um, I'm going to plug it up. 
and we'll give it a quick test. Gotta cut this other heater off for a minute. And we'll get this one plugged in. Okay, it's plugged in. We'll go to fan. Okay, that's running. We'll cut it off. Spin down time is decent. Cut it back on. And we'll do a uh, heat. It's getting hot. More heat. It's getting hotter. Let it cool off. And we'll conclude that test. Okay, so it seems to be fully operational. Today. And now let's put the guard back on. Long screws go at the bottom, and the middle and upper screws are the same length. Okay, that's that. It's all back together. Much nicer looking now. Actually, it didn't come out too bad. Let's start it up. Definitely moving more air than it was before. Much more air. Thermostat is working. Let's do low heat. Very, very quiet. This is a nice uh, warm heat, but it's definitely not hot. You could sit in front of this and it would be very comfortable. And now let's go to high heat. It's definitely warmer, but it's still not hot. I'm standing back about two feet from it, and uh, it's it's still warm. The air is definitely still warm. Well, this will be a great heater, excuse me, to use during videos because it's very quiet. And um, I imagine it's going to heat pretty well because even though it's not super hot, it's, it's pouring out a lot. Jeez. It's pouring out a lot of air. So I do think it's going to heat well. So that's going to be it for this one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.